The Royal Air Force was taken aback by rumors of a new German fighter plane, the Fock Wolf FW-190, in the summer of 1941. Initially, the Allies assumed the reports were about captured French Curtis P-36 Mohawks. They quickly realized, however, that the Spitfire Mark V was outperformed by the new fighter, showing an astonishing achievement of German engineering. The Fokker Wolf FW-190 was the world's fastest, most nimble, most adaptable aircraft, bringing the RAF to its knees and momentarily undermining British air dominance over the English Channel. The West rushed to create an antidote to the German Butcher Bird. Prior to World War II, Germany prioritized the development of a new generation of airplanes in order to convert the Luftwaffe into a world aviation force. The German Ministry of Aviation conducted a competition in 1934 to design a new plane. The parasol-winged FW-159, designed by Fokker Wolf's principal designer Kurt Tank, was surpassed by the Arado AR-80, Henkel HE-112 and Messerschmitt BF-109. The FW-159 and the AR-80 were both eliminated from the competition. Kurt Tank determined to develop a new fighter to supplement the BF-109, offering German pilots with speed, safety and dependability. The Fokker Wolf 190 was a breakthrough aircraft meant to compete with the world's two quickest fighters, the Messerschmitt BF-109 and the British Spitfire. Because of the severe conditions of World War I, the aircraft were constructed with weaponry as an afterthought and were compared to racehorses. The Focke Wolf 190 was meant to operate from ill-prepared frontline airfields, to be flown and maintained by soldiers with little training and to withstand a decent amount of battle damage while regaining vigor. This was the inspiration for the Focke Wolf 190 which was designed to be a cavalry horse rather than a racer. Tank's first audacious choice was to place a radial engine on a land-based fighter. Disregarding European engineers' worries that the massive frontal area would cause excessive drag, they felt that a streamlined arrangement would balance drag and radial engine durability. The BMW 139 was initially chosen for the FW 190 but it proved to be unreliable and difficult. The BMW 801 14-cylinder radial engine and a unique BMW-designed cooling system with an annular ring-shaped oil cooler core integrated into the forward cowl were chosen. This new aircraft feature was created to alleviate performance difficulties. The aircraft's design enabled air to flow across the space between the cowl and the metal ring's outer lip, generating a vacuum effect that pushed air from the engine's front over the oil cooler core. Moving the metal ring controls, the cooling air flow rate over the center, minimizing aerodynamic drag and warming air before it flows to the radiator during engine start. This revolutionary cooling system allowed the engine to shine even while the plane was parked. Unlike previous designs, like as the BF-109, which traded speed for landing dependability, the FW-190 was built to be exceptionally dependable for takeoffs and landings. Focke Wolf devised a broad tracked inward retraction landing gear capable of withstanding a sink rate of 15 feet per second to improve ground handling qualities. Tank engineers redesigned the outcrop controls, which were formerly employed by cables and pulleys, owing to their tendency to strain and require frequent maintenance to ensure extended lifespan and dependability. This strategy attempted to enhance the lives of pilots during the conflict. To solve deterioration difficulties and make controls lighter, the team replaced cables with stiff push heads and bearings in a new design. The maximum resistance of the ailerons was restricted to eight pounds, and the tail assembly featured modest, well-balanced surfaces. Instead of hydraulic systems, 
They used powered equipment, such as push buttons to operate the undercarriage and electric motors in the wings. This made flying the butcher bird easier and more dependable. The horizontal and vertical surfaces on the tail assembly were tiny and well balanced. Due to its speed, agility, dependability, safety and ease of flying, the FW-190 became the backbone of the Luftwaffe's fighter force. German pilots admired the FW-190's ability to take off and land in locations where other aircraft could not, as well as its adaptability in bombing raids, ground strikes, air patrols and dogfights. Adolf Galland lauded the FW-190's handling and weaponry, claiming that it outperformed bombers at heights beyond 25,000 feet because to its heavier armament, lower vulnerability and greater pilot protection. These characteristics were especially useful for bomber and slug flinger missions. The FW-190 was a highly successful and dependable German fighter that saw service in all major actions following 1942. Although it initially outperformed all allies, it remained a popular pick, owing to its simplicity of flying and speed. Because the Allies were unaware of the FW-190's capabilities, capturing it became a top priority. The aim had been to steal an FW-190 for examination, but the British were able to get an undamaged FW-190A3 in late June 1942, when German pilot Oberlieutenant Armin Faber inadvertently turned over a totally intact sample to the British. The studies on the FW-190 piqued the interest of Allied engineers, leading to the creation of the two-stage supercharged Merlin 61 engine for the Spitfire Mark IX. The Royal Air Force saw the Butcher Bird and its designs, and the cooling system and installation of the engine influenced the Hawker Siddeley Tempest II. The FW-190's first big mass operation occurred on August 19, 1942, during Operation Jubilee, an Allied strike on Deeper. Two German fighter squadrons equipped with high-altitude BF-109G1 models and FW-190 fighters fought off against over 300 RAF fighter planes, including Spitfire VB models, Spitfire Mark 9Bs and Hawker Typhoons. Hawker Hurricane and RAF Allison engine Mustang units flew fighter-bomber and reconnaissance missions as well. The two units deploying the novel-driven fighter lost 25 models during the raid. While the Butcher Birds claimed 61 of the 106 Allied aircraft, FW-190s were also utilized as fighter-bombers hitting commerce and port targets along England's southeastern coast because of their limited radar coverage and ability to retreat before RAF planes could engage them the butcher birds were tough to oppose however the most successful fighter bomber mission occurred on October 31st 1942 during the Luftwaffe's greatest daylight attack since the Battle of Britain Over 70 FW-190s dropped 30 bombs on Canterbury, causing extensive damage with just one FW-1-90 destroyed over English territory. During Operation Overlord, the Hawker Typhoon became a critical fighter capable of intercepting FW-190s, which proved to be a valuable asset to the Axis powers. On June 6, 1944, German planes conducted over 760 sorties to halt the Allied assault in northern France. Despite losing 200 FW-190s to enemy fire, German pilots destroyed 526 Allied planes. Until the conclusion of the war, the Butcher Birds served as the Luftwaffe's primary cavalry horse giving competent and dependable performance. However, the days of crashing Allied military preparations were long gone. Over 80 FW-190 variants were built, 
with some being adapted for high altitude flight, ground assault, or training activities. Among the significant enhancements were the FW-190A8, FW-190, F-8, and FW-190D8. Germany's incapacity to develop new fighter aircraft, on the other hand, limited its potential to change the battle tide in its favor.